I'm doing good. How are you? Uh, thank you very much for coming by and stopping by. It's been an exciting week for the Miami Heat, right? You got Wade coming back. We got, I'm sure, season tickets now are, are selling, uh, you know, like they've never sold before. A chance to say goodbye to one of the legends here in the Miami market. And now you throw on these this whole Jimmy Butler rumors going on. Let me ask you, Alphonse, what percentage would you put on the chance of the Miami Heat landing a Jimmy Butler. Well, I all I can I can tell you for certain that the Heat are interested, and there's a little there's some mutual interest there. Um, but as a percentage, I would probably say somewhere between 25, 30 percent. Mm. Um, the issue is not whether is, is he a fit in Miami. He's absolutely a fit. Uh, his work ethic, or his play style, um, just his his uh, desire to be in a place that uh, values hard work. Yeah, that all fits. But the problem is, um, I'm sure Jimmy probably wants to play next to another superstar um, coming up in the next couple seasons, and the Heat really don't have that kind of cap space. Um, the Heat are kind of uh, the Heat have don't have a lot of wiggle room until about 2020, uh, unless Pat can pull off some kind of miracle. So um, the relationship with Dwayne is there. Um, the Heat have some things that the um, that the Timberwolves would want when you talk about Kelly Olynyk. Uh, Josh Richardson, Justice Winslow, Bam out of bio. We, uh, the Heat have some first round picks that they can trade. So they can put together a trade and they can maybe, uh, put something together with something that the Timberwolves want, but it doesn't necessarily mean that Jimmy is going to want to sign an extension here. Well, you know, poor Jimmy, too. Let's not go feeling bad for him. I think he'd be limited to approximately $141 million over five years if he signs with a new club. How are you supposed to live on that, Alphonse? How's that going to work? I mean, in South Florida, I don't know what that gets you. Maybe, a, you know, a small one-bedroom condo. Maybe maybe the, maybe the efficiency somewhere in Miami. I don't know. I love it. Alphonse Sidney joining us, Five Reasons Sports Network. Uh, before we talk about Dwayne Wade and the, and the goodbye tour, which is what's coming up here, talk to us a little bit about the Miami Heat Beat podcast, what you're doing at Five Reasons Sports. So for those that don't know, will know, and how to be able to get in touch with you guys. Well, Five Reasons Sports is started by Ethan Skolnick. Um, you know, he's been a writer down here for years. Um, and Chris Whittingham, who's also been a radio personality and a uh, broadcaster down here for years. They started, uh, they had the flagship show. It's uh, Five Reasons Sports. And then they've kind of, uh, they've branched out into the network. They, we have a Dolphins um, podcast called Three Yards Per Carry. We have the Miami Heat podcast, Miami Heat Beat. We have a Hurricanes podcast, a Marlins podcast, a Panthers podcast. We have O.J. McDuffie telling old Dolphin stories. Uh, we, I mean, we have 15 total podcasts. Um, we even have a pro wrestling podcast. So <laughs> we, it's a pretty huge network. Um, and as for as for Heat, yeah, we have pro wrestling. So we, we run the game. We even have uh, pop culture. I, I, do a, I do a pop culture and politics show. Uh, called Light Skin Opinions. We have Balls Cast, which is also more pop culture, uh, everything Miami. So we just do a little bit of everything. Uh, Miami Heat Beat, we also, uh, we, we do, we write, we have articles, we have video content. Um, we have a website, MiamiHeatBeat.com. Uh, I write for the website. We have other writers there. Uh, so we kind of, we, we got you all covered when it comes to South Florida sports. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it be the Dolphins, the Heat, Midget Wrestling. You did say Midget Wrestling. Well, or Wrestling, I'm sorry. Close enough. Yes, Midget Any, Yes, Midget. Anything along no. those. I'm sure that's not politically <laughs> correct either, and I don't give a rat. Anyway, uh, you want to definitely check it out. Some great stuff there. And also, it's going to be a fun year for for Miami Heat fans because they are going to have an opportunity to say goodbye to Dwayne Wade and uh, watch him go out on his own terms, which is great, and it's going to be great for the fans of Miami. But I've been saying this, Alphonse. I'm not a big fan of the farewell tours. I hated it with Derek Jeter. I hated it even more with Kobe Bryant. I get it here for the 305. The 305, 954, they are going to love it. But is Dwayne Wade the kind of transcending figure that a Kobe Bryant was that on a Tuesday night in Milwaukee, they're going to sell out for a chance to see Dwayne Wade one last time? What I think is funny about it, I think if he was in another uniform, no. But Dwayne Wade in a Miami Heat uniform uh, on a farewell tour is a huge deal. Um, and I think part of the drama of him leaving and coming back, playing for the Bulls and, uh, and the Cavs, I think that added to some of the mystique about it 
the fact that he's home and this is, you know, he's going out on his own terms. There's a little bit of a story to it, a little bit of a romance to it. I think sometimes um, in South Florida, we we kind of discount his his legacy outside of our of our boundaries. I mean, when you when you talk about uh, top 10, 20 players of all time, um, he's going to he's going to be in a lot of people's top 20. Uh, third best shooting guard of all time, pretty much uh, universally accepted as such. So when we talk about Dwayne Wade in a, on a historical level, three-time champion, um, finals MVP, maybe the greatest finals performance of all time, he is widely respected. And he's one of those guys, um, <clears throat> like, with, like Jeter, where he doesn't have a lot of controversy in his past. And he is universally loved. You know, with the, the arguments about Dwayne Wade, you know, when you get him on social media, they don't get intense like the Kobe and LeBron arguments. People just seem to like, love, and appreciate Dwayne Wade. So I do think this is going to be a really, really feel-good farewell tour, um, unlike, you know, like a Paul Pierce or something like that, right. where it's just kind of sad. <laughs> this yeah. is going to be a really – I mean, he's loved throughout the league and loved by other players and loved by other franchises and coaches, so – I think it's going to be a good one. It's certainly going to be good here for the 305. I mean, it, and I, I'm wondering if you could talk for those uh, across the country who don't understand just how much he meant, not only to the to the team, to the franchise, to the organization, but even from a economy standpoint, what having Dwayne Wade back in Miami uh, after a couple of years of whatever the hell he did there in Chicago and Cleveland, whatever that was, um, but just from an from an economy standpoint, how much he means and how much this year is going to mean uh, for the people who really make a living following Dwayne Wade? Well, I mean, you look at it. When, when you say greatest athlete in South Florida sports history, there's only two names that actually can be really discussed seriously. It's Dan Marino and it's Dwayne Wade. And when you look at those two, uh, who has three championships? So it can be argued, um, but he is the greatest champion in the history of South Florida. And it's not even close. You know, the, he is the guy. Um, so even last year for us at Heat Beat, you know, we, we do our podcast. We do our podcast no matter how good or how bad the team is. We cover the team. Um, but Dwayne coming back was just huge. It, the podcast numbers blew up. Um, I know that interest in the team shot up all over the place. Um, it, it's just different when you have a marquee name um, up in lights. You know, as much as I love Goran Dragic and Josh, Richard, Josh Richardson and Justice Winslow, they are not, you know, they're, they're, they're good players, to, you know, really good players, but they're not putting butts in seats. And, I mean, when Dwayne announced he was coming back, I think the, the cheapest price uh, to get in the door for the final home game of the season shot up to almost 200 bucks. Mm. And we're talking about nosebleed, you know, all the way up. Up there, where you know, you know, you're you're above the 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 big screen, like you're you're way in the back, and you're spending two hundred bucks. So we know what's gonna what the four seats for that game are gonna be like. We know that the stars will be out for that game. You know, you'll see the Kevin Hart's, and you know, Jeter will probably show up. But it's gonna be a big, big, huge event, and um, it's gonna give the you know the last two two months of the season. Um, a lot more juice than it would have had before. So it, it's a really good thing, especially for a year where he fans have been kind of down on the team. It was funny, I, you know, I didn't, and I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but I know you mentioned Dragic, uh, Winslow, Richard. You didn't say Hassan Whiteside, dude, okay? You just didn't say Hassan Whiteside. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I just wanted to remind you I wasn't sure. But we'll give me your, and by the way, Alf on Sydney joining us at Alf954. Love that, by the way, on Twitter. Part of the Five Reasons Sports Network. Check out the Heat Beat podcast. Everything to do with the Miami Heat. They cover it better than the local media. I'm telling you, it's amazing stuff. What do you think about the going into this year? There was, especially after the draft and before we knew the Wade thing, there were a lot of people going, we are stuck in mediocrity here. We we are lucky. We're going to be a 500 team, maybe a seven or eight seed. Uh, what has Wade done from a wins and losses and a realistic standpoint for the success of this team this year? If anything. To be honest with you, I to be honest with you, I don't think he's done. And as much as I love Dwayne, uh, I don't think he's done much as far as wins and losses. Um, what he's done is add an interest, um, an interest level to the team. Um, it, there's just, it's just going to be, it's going to be something else. 
there's going to be something more to that Tuesday night in Brooklyn, right? <laughs> it's not going to be <laughs> as much of a drag as it might have been. Um, and, yeah, and the Heat are, that's where they are. They're bottom, you know, they're a bottom half playoff team, and that's probably the ceiling. Um, but one thing that Dwayne does is when you start, when Jimmy Butler says he wants out of Minnesota, and you see, oh, wait, Dwayne has a relationship. Dwayne has a relationship. So, I, you know, listen, it might be pipe dreams or not, but you do feel like you have a horse in the race um, when Dwayne Wade is on your team and Dwayne might be out there recruiting. You know, him and Jimmy are close. He's a close, close with a lot of guys. So when, when you do see a disgruntled superstar out there and you think, okay, well, we, you know, well, maybe we don't have all the assets, but we do have Pat Riley and Dwayne Wade on our side, it does make you feel a little bit better about your prospects. I want to ask you, too, Alphonse, you are you love the NBA, man. You follow the Heat. Why is it you think of all the teams Jimmy Butler talked about wanting to go to, the Lakers weren't one of them? Why the Lakers weren't one of them? Yeah, why, why do you think that a guy like Jimmy Butler has no interest in playing with LeBron James? Because you get all the blame and none of the credit. Um, okay. <laughs> you don't, if, if, when, when LeBron James loses, it's because his teammates aren't good enough. When he wins, is LeBron carried those bums all the way to a title. We saw it down here. And listen, I love LeBron James. I, I personally think um, there, is a, there is a real conversation to be had whether he's the greatest player of all time. Mm-hmm. But when, I, when we're to, we talk about media coverage and the credit that people get, we, are, we have seen it. We've seen what's happened to Chris Bosh and Kevin Love and even Kyrie Irving. And even, you know, Dwayne's legacy is a little bit tarnished by the fact that there are people out there that think um, – LeBron is what made his legacy, forgetting that he already won a title in 2006 without LeBron. So I, I look at if I'm a superstar and I, you know, I'm Kawhi Leonard, I'm Jimmy Butler, I'm Kyrie Irving, and you know, I see the looming shadow of the Golden State Warriors, and I know I'm not going to win a title. And when I don't win a title and I'm playing with LeBron James, it's going to be my fault. LeBron didn't have enough help. Who wants to sign up for that? Mm. You know, it's, it's, you're you're not going. You're not going to be the star of that team. It's not going to be your team, and you're going to have to shoulder all the blame. So, really, what's the point? And where do you think? I mean, if yeah, if your gut was telling you, where do you think Jimmy Butler ends up? Does he go anywhere? I mean, is it a guaranteed? Do you think he leaves Minnesota? Do you think the Knicks are really in play with Kyrie Irving? Where do you think he lands? I, I don't know. I mean, I know the Clippers uh, have a lot of interesting things to offer. Uh, I heard the Denver Nuggets, they have a lot of assets to offer. They're in play. Um, I think the Heat are right there. I think the Heat are one of four teams. Um, I, I, I think the Knicks are gun-shy with some of their younger assets, their younger players. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they've had a history of, of you know, selling the farm for guys like Carmelo Anthony, or Amari Sotomayor, and then really having nothing to show for it. So I think they're gun-shy there. Um, I mean, if I'm the Brooklyn Nets, I go for broke. Right. I mean, what what else do you have to what do you have to lose? You know, they've done a lot. I mean, Bobby, Mar- I think it's Bobby Marks up there. He's done a lot of things um, to make them viable when not so much on the court. But when you look at their books and their assets and and they're going to cast me, that's why, Jimmy, you know, when you get those three teams, uh, that's coming straight from Jimmy's agent. He's talking about three teams that have max um, that have max slots available, multiple max slots. Uh, coming up for the next off season, so that's where you get those teams from. And if I'm Brooklyn, um, go for it. You know what do you have to lose? I agree 100. percent I mean, it's a, the, you can only go up. I can't remember the last time Alphonse that the East we're having a conversation about. Okay, who's going to win the East? And it didn't involve LeBron James. I mean, it's it's been a long ass time since we we've had a conversation about you know teams like the Sixers and Boston and and you know who's got the chance of of taking the East now. And it's uh, I can't remember the last time it's been this wide open in the East. Why not Brooklyn? Well, to me, that's the whole thing right right now. It's if you look at the East, you, I think a lot of teams that are right. If you're in that playoff picture, right, and there's a chance to bring in a number one, number two kind of guy, right? What's it, maybe now is the time to do it because that's what can put you over the over the hump. Because really, you know, is anybody scared of Toronto? Um, is any? I mean, mm. Boston looks scary on paper. Um, you know, Philadelphia, I, you know, I, I still don't feel like they're very proven. So maybe, you know, maybe it is time to take a chance. 
because LeBron's out of the way. You know, the years of tanking, at some point you have to cash in. Mm. So Brooklyn's been, um, Brooklyn's made the moves. Maybe it's, it's time to cash in. You get, you know, a, there's word out there that Kyrie's uh, father wants him to play in New York. Mm. Um, if it's not New York, why not Brooklyn? If you get Jimmy over there, Jimmy and Kyrie are close. Next off season, uh, you offer Jimmy the max. You still have another max slot open. You slide Kyrie in there. Now you got Kyrie and Jimmy Butler. Who's to say that you're not the best team in the East at that point? Absolutely nothing, which is why I think, if nothing else, this is going to be a lot of fun to watch what happens and how this all unfolds. And the hell with it. You know, here in, in the 305 and the 954, an added bonus is not only is the East wide open, but we get to say goodbye to Dwayne Wade on his terms the right way. So that's going to be an awful lot of fun. This was an awful lot of fun. Alphonse Sidney, uh, the Heat Beat podcast is how you catch him each and every week. Part of the Five Reasons Sports Network. I certainly uh, encourage you, go check it out. When it comes to the Miami Heat, these guys cover it better than than the media does. Because basically, the media only has one guy, and he's half in the bag most of the time anyway. So, Alphonse Sidney, thank you, brother, for, for coming by, man, and hanging out. I hope we can do this again soon, man. No problem, man. Just call me up anytime. You got it. I love it. Al Fonz Sydney. Make sure you check out the podcast, the Heat Beat podcast on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Good stuff there, man. Really cool stuff.